What is up, y'all? It has been way too long since my last video, but I'm here back again. Uh, my goal with this video is to address one of the most common questions that I've gotten about time stretching, which is how do you chop perfect loops on the Digitact? Um, what I'm going to show you is nothing groundbreaking, but it's just some of the best practices that I've developed while using this method. Uh, the sample that we're going to be working with today is the song Lebanese Blonde by Thievery Corporation. Um, and I'm going to be starting right around 35 seconds if you would like to follow along, which I would recommend. Without further ado, let's sample this song and get to chopping. Alright, so we are now here looking at our sample. I filled up the recording buffer with the sample, but before I go chopping, I want to make a couple adjustments to the pattern. And this is a brand new pattern. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to hold track, so I'm controlling all the tracks, and I'm going to turn forward loop mode on, because I want to be able to test the loops. And then I'm going to go into trig, and I'm going to pitch it up by five semitones. This is arbitrary, it's just so that the loop plays a little bit faster. Now it's time to chop up some loops. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the start to be on the actual first drum hit. And then I'm gonna listen for the loop point and I'm gonna manually grab the loop point like this. So while I'm doing that, I was keeping my eye on where it looks like that loop point is, and I'm like, oh, it seems like it's right around here. So let's test that. Yeah, so that is, that is the point that the bar turns around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop that. I'm going to say yes, yes, and now I'm going to name the sample. I'll show you the naming convention that I use which is this, I say the date, 318, and then the name, let's call this blonde, because it's Lebanese blonde, and then I go dash one, because this is the first chop. Now, you see I just copied the name. I do it almost instinctively, but yes, you can copy the name, so you don't have to type this every time. Now, mind you, there's only one copy buffer, so if I was to go out of this menu and copy a pattern or copy a sound or whatever, I lose this name, so it's best to do it all in one go. Copy, function copy, I say yes. Now I assign it to track one, and, and now I test the loop. So it works. Now, an important thing to note, once you start doing this, do not leave this menu because you will lose your start and end points, which is very irritating. The whole point of this is we want to keep the start and end points. Now that we have this loop and it was successful, I'm going to take the start point, move it all the way to the end point. It only lets me move it to the end point. And then I'm going to move the end point to where I think the next bar is, which is maybe like right here. I don't know. So let's test it. Okay, so that is the drum hit. So I'm gonna chop it on this one. I'm gonna say yes, yes. Paste the name. Increment the number. Copy the new incremented name. Say yes. Assign it to track two. And now I'm going to test the loop. And the loop works. Great. So now we do the same thing again, go like that, test it. So this sample is pretty easy to chop, but not all samples are that easy. You're going to mess it up inevitably. So let's walk through how to deal with when you mess up chopping a loop. So this one, I already know this is not really a perfect loop, but I'm just gonna say yes, yes, paste the name, increment the name, copy the incremented name, and now I want to say yes and save this to track three. Now when I go to test the loop, you can tell that it doesn't work. The first thing that I do is I go in and try and fix the loop. That sounded like it went too long. I was like, oh, I didn't really chop it on the drum beat. so. What if I'm like, oh, well, I think this is it. I test it. Yep, 
Well, I can hear I got some of that in there, so I'm gonna just chop it right here. Say yes, yes, paste the name, keep the same name so that when I save this, I'm overwriting that bad sample. And now I test this loop. If it works, save it, and if not, try again. Now the question is, maybe you do this a couple times, what happens to these bad loops? Because we used the same name, only the good loop, the final one that you save, exists in the hard disk. However, the bad loops still exist in the RAM of the project. What I would do if, you, if you're going through getting your chops and you make some mistakes along the way, it's gonna happen, it always happens. I recommend don't leave this menu, finish your chops once you get them right, then at the end, go into your RAM so I can see, oh, there's two of blonde three. So now I would go into, so let me back out of this, settings, samples, go to the left so you can see view RAM, scroll down through all my samples and see blonde three, and I would go through, say I had blonde with like one through six or whatever, select all the ones that are bad, unload them, and then go into the plus drive, find the samples that I've just been chopping, and then I would load, basically select copies of the samples that already exist that I know are good and load them to the project. And that's going to fill in the gaps because when you leave gaps here, the next time you chop a sample, it's gonna go into the gap. That's the way that it works, um, which is, I can see why they did it that way, but you wanna fill in these gaps. So guys, that is essentially it. A couple things to note is that this is a message for Electron. If it just looped in this menu, we wouldn't have to do all this rigmarole. We would just be able to test the loop in here without ever having to worry about saving a bad loop. In my opinion, it should just loop in here. I don't know why it doesn't, but, or at least give us the option. Once you have all these loops and you know that they're good, then you can just drop them into your time stretching projects and you know they're gonna work. And of course you could just do this in a DAW, but I kind of like the idea of keeping it all in the box or at least being able to if you want to. Anyway, this was just a quick rundown of kind of my approach to doing this. A lot of people have been asking, I hope you enjoyed, let me know what you think, if this works for you. If you have further questions, I'd be happy to follow up. Let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.